Okay, my friends, this is going to be just over the top. But since the discovery of mud fossils, everything changes. The giants were real, there's no question. A lot of things have to be reconsidered. One of them is Uluru. They call it Ayers Rock as well. We're going to take a look at that right now. Now, I am going to show you the geology, which is really biology, and I am going to relate it to what's called transition metals. All right. In here are the colored metals that attach to oxygen primarily and move things around in your body. They're called uh, metal complexes. And the metal core, like iron, carries around oxygen. Let's, let me just show you. I'm doing two things at once. <laughs> it's the way I do things. I'm going to be talking about opals. Opals form only in the presence of a dense amount of these blood metals. Those are the things that have all the colors. So I'm going to be talking about opals primarily, it was going to do that, and then I figured, well, let me get into the, to the history a little bit too, because it's all, you have to understand, it's one big package, it's not just, I could pinch this little thing and say, oh, look at that, and everybody's fine, no, you got to look at the whole package and relate one thing to the other, and we have to go back and look at these original Dreamtime stories, everybody had one. And they were everyone. A hundred percent of them were too spectacular to even be considered. But I'm going to tell you what: <laughs> they're not even spectacular enough. All right, now there is one hundred percent certainty that the colored things I am showing to you are the result of these transition metals bonding with the resident stuff. So these transition metals go in there and they attach and they create all kinds of different colors. Now I've shown that over and over and, there's, and I show them in these little rocks where that's, that's actually a lung. And when you see it separated and you see the little spots in between, that's where the blood runs. And those other things are the alveoli and they collect these colors because they're in the blood and blood has all these different metals in it. Now, iron in your body, the plus two, two state is black or blue in your body, it's black in the mud fossils. The plus three state is, is red. It's your red iron blood. Now, there's no question that all of these other metals are in your body too. So they're changing these colors, because that's not the colors of iron. Iron, like I say, two should be black, three should be red in the mud fossils. No question about that. That is absolutely 100% certainty. Now, why they show them in these colors, I'm not exactly sure, but this is, these are oxidation states. And this is what happens. These metal cores drag around these particles and they drop them off. Iron is the, the, the delivery agent for oxygen. The O2 and O3 state, you drop off an oxygen. You some carbon dioxide, you take the oxygen. That's how it works. Your body is a giver and a taker. And you have to have the right chemistry or you cannot give or you may not be able to take. Now, i got to be honest with you, I don't know exactly where this is, is, this is, but I was told it was in Australia somewhere. And you saw all these different colors. Those are different transition metals. And you say, oh, those are just different bacteria. Yes, but they live in different, different chemistry. All right? They eat different things and they turn to different colors. Yes, there's no question about that. But this is, I believe this could very well be part of the lung in that area because of, I showed you my lungs, how they have all these different colored spots. Same thing, and it has all the brown running between it. Basically identical. All right, you see that? I remember I showed you the little lung. Here it is right here. It's basically the same thing. Now, let me turn it a little bit, and you'll see the brown... You see that brown, little swishy brown looking stuff? That's the same swishy looking brown stuff you saw at the bottom. And in between is all the colored little spots. Basically identical. You see that? I believe that's from a lung somewhere. 
Now they call Uluru a sandstone, but it is it's the the actual tissue from heart. This is heart muscle. And it erodes it looks like sandstone, but it's it's an iron oxide fascia basically. So, as you saw, the geology page says 95% of all the best opals in the world come from the central portion of Australia. You don't get any more central than that. And that happens to be where Uluru is. And Uluru, I'm just, you know, just going to tell you right flat out, it's a heart of some gigantic creature that was here on Earth long, long ago. And I'll show you anatomically what a heart, and it, these muscles pull together. These are stripes of muscle, and they pull together, and this is all red blood running off here, and then collecting somewhere down here where there's a lot of salts. You see over here? You see this? I think I showed you some other places where this sort of stuff is all salty looking crazy looking colors and things and this is where the blood has flowed in and mixed with the salts and transitioned biology whatever biology was here a lot of it's turned into opal because of the nucleophilic invasion and substitution by blood metals from blood. Luru was a heart. Now, why it collected in these areas, wherever there's a lot of salt and there's a lot of blood, this is what you're going to get. And it's got to be staying aqueous for very long periods of time. All right, here's where that, that those colored salt lakes came from that I was showing you a minute ago. Or I think I showed you. Whether it will come down home in, I don't know doesn't appear to but this is not this is not normal all right it's coming down it takes a while this is biology my friends that's biology and this is where the salts mix with the blood and if you get it in if you get a body part like a shell or a a foot or a toe or anything it's going to turn into oval the the degradable flesh will stabilize just like that heart did that I showed you looks like they're over here digging or maybe these are just natural pools by themselves I don't know Not sure what to think about that, but I can tell you one thing that what it is is the the chemistry is being invaded and stabilized, otherwise it would rot. This world is a lot different than we've been thinking it is. A lot, lot different. And if you get up here and take some time, look around. Look at all these little stripes in here. What is, what's this doing here? Why are these all these stripey looking things going on? That at one time was some kind of biology. I can't tell you what. And you're going to find all kinds of abrupt transitions. Like this thing here, that's an abrupt transition from, from uh, I believe it's muscle running into another layer of muscle. I have it here, the same sort of looking stuff. Hold on, I'll show it to you. See, this is muscle that's in my shop here. And this is where the red blood feeds the muscle fibers. You see these little breaks right here? These are abrupt transitions. That's where the muscle fibers meet more muscle fibers and they overlap and they can pull back and forth against each other. Up here is a tendon. See the tendon, a little different color? Very, very fibrous. Tough, tough, tough. And then at the very top of the tendon, there's a glue, a literal glue. It glues this tendon into a socket wherever it's supposed to be glued into. And then that pulls your muscle. But this can't come out of there. That glue is tough. 
Okay, once again, uh, this is Ayers Rock, Uluru. Someone sent me a whole batch of pictures from there. I get people all over the world sending me things now. Now, that's that's a, a venture, uh, you know, some kind of a plumbing. Because <laughs> you got all kinds of plumbing going on. See, look at this thing. All of this is, that's, that's arterial, I mean, um, cardiac muscle. And there is very little possibility I'm wrong. These are, you see these, are, hold on a second. I have a part here, if I can find it, give me a second. Hold on. All right, I have quite a few hearts here, but this one here shows specifically what you see here. You see those black dots? I believe that's where heart strings were attached. And they run like this. This separates the ventricle walls. There was some plumbing here. There was a big batch of plumbing up here that came in. And when they break off, the, the fascia just sort of globs around. But this is basically what we're looking at here, this type of thing. These holes open up, and they're just the iron, which is the this magnetite and hematite. Hematite is the red. It's hema is red blood. Hema blood. And the black is magnetite, which turns sort of magnetic, and it only has two oxygens. This has three oxygens. Turns into iron much better than the black. Anyway, this is what that is. This is a heart. And it's, it, no, it's just obviously pretty solid. But this gives you some idea. And I have other ones that have actually turned into, to, um, glass almost and that's where some of the plumbing was on this one and I can actually see the valves and everything when I put it under the microscope and this was one of the lobes of the lung you know basic I mean of the heart basically like these they, they had chambers in them they're pumps when they go poof it squirts the blood through your body and when it opens back up it sucks all the vein blood into the heart when it closes again, one side is the red goes into your body, the black or in blue in your body, or, or vein blood, goes into your kidneys and your um, liver and all of that stuff to get cleaned up, your lungs and all that. So this pushes one side one way and the other side the other way. And the valves, which I see all the time in the veins, I can see the valves. And they stop the blood from going backwards. The arteries don't have veins. I mean, don't have valves. Blood goes either way. It doesn't matter. It's because it's clean. Once it's on the other side of that barrier, it can't go backwards. And this is some more Uluru. These are muscle bands. You see the black? That's, that's the vein blood. Or it could be red blood turning black. I don't know, you know, because it, it, it will weather and it will change. But this is blood coming out of there. This is, it's not hard to see. There's another cavity in here, which was, I don't know, some kind of chamber or whatever. Now here's theirs from the top. What happens is these these muscle bands pull in, and like I say, one squirts out, one pulls back in. Now, all around Uluru, Ayers, whatever you want to call it, there's all the blood has run out of here. And that's where they find the opals, because opals make blood. Um, blood makes the transition metals, the transition metals make opals. And if you soak, soak something long enough, it will, it will absorb those metals, and it will take on the colors of those metals. As a matter of fact, let me just show you those metals. Hold on one more. See, this is when the water pours through there. Just like that other one of the black strip was running down. Water will, will turn blood a little bit. It'll change it to black, actually. Because the water, H2O, has an affinity to suck off other oxygens. An oxygen state is nothing, blood is nothing more than an oxygen state. It's either black or in the body they show it as blue. In the mud fossils it's black or it's red, one or the other. 
That's the way it looks. All right, you saw all those eroded cliffs in there. This is what it is. The red stuff erodes right out. These, this is the connective tissue that surrounds them and keeps it as a structural organ. All right, I just want to finish it up pretty quick. Th th that cardiac muscle was all this stuff right here. Now, because of nucleophilic substitution, the invasion is very, very thorough. However, a little bit of a change in the chemistry between this connective tissue stuff and the, the red bloody muscle puller stuff uh, lets it erode away. That's why they call it sandstone, but it's very close. It's very close to quartz um, um, because of the, the long duration hot water salty floods. And in this case, is all those blood ran out and collected down below and turned into opals. All right, no reason to get very complicated. This is the stuff that's on Ayer's heart. All, all of the fascia on the outside eroded away it's down to the muscle. Now, all of that blood just ran out. These are all the tubing that runs in. You have vein blood and you have artery blood and you got some going here and some going to your lungs and some going to your, the rest of your body. It's, it's, it's a very, very complicated system. And it, it just squeezes it and then it pushes one way and pulls the other way. It pushes one way, pulls the other way. And that's what Ayer's rock Uluru is. Now, we're dealing with things nobody's ever known about before. It's time to start thinking about it. Well, what is the implications here? All right, here it is. This is when they were writing this stuff. 1184 BC to 144 BC. So, that, that thousand years plus, they were speaking about all the things that the myths talked about, and then all of a sudden they changed.